material science and engineering. Uh, okay, so I get asked this a lot on airplanes. So people ask you, like, what do you do? And I say, oh, I'm a professor of material science and engineering. And they go, so uh, I basically tell them, you know, remember, maybe it's before your time, but there was this commercial for BASF. And it's like, we don't make the materials you buy. We make the materials you buy better, you know? Like, we try to do that kind of stuff. So we try to, you know, my group in particular, what we do is look to, like, the next generation of materials and try to engineer new types of functionality, new types of phenomena and properties that will motivate engineering uh, of devices for the next generation of challenges. So that could be for like computers and, and sensing and logic and these sorts of things. But you know, there's a lot of applications, but I think what material science and engineering is to me is, is controlling materials to achieve kind of a new goal and push the edges of what we can do with materials. Okay, so we are very, um, so a traditional electronic materials person would, would think we are, we are working in a very weird area of dirty, nasty materials. So we work on, on complex oxides that have a pretty diverse range of functionality. So to me, an electronic material uh, in the traditional sense is a material that uh, allows us or enables us to have devices like computers and, 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 and electronics in the traditional sense. What we're kind of working on in that same phase space are, are maybe multifunctional materials. So things that don't just respond to electric field, but they also respond to magnetic fields. And there's cross-coupling between these things so that when you apply one stimuli, you get two responses to these materials. So again, in the same spirit of you know, what I think material science is, we're trying to push the edge of, of what we can do with the material. and. Um, at the end of the day, again, it's, it's about creating a, a functional response with which you can, you can do something in that material. Oh man, what isn't exciting about these materials? So there's a, there's a lot of challenges you know, at, at every level. So my group really does things that span from the really fundamental kind of materials physics and materials science side of things all the way to the engineering side of things. So, um, there are challenges in the fundamental synthesis of the materials. How do we control these materials at a very fine and precise level? So we're trying to, you know, in my group, we can control materials down to a, about a half a unit cell level. So we can deposit a half a unit cell, maybe one unit cell. We can build up artificial heterostructures. You can put two layers of this and two layers of that and repeat these things and build up artificial materials in that, in that capacity. Um, so the synthesis itself is, is difficult and is challenging and the materials have complex chemistries and, uh, and, and trying to figure out that, that puzzle is, is, is quite exciting. Then from, you know, on, on the more practical side of things, we want them to have properties. And so how do you create uh, a device that allows you to measure those properties and utilize those properties? We observe bizarre phenomena in material all the time and then we have to think about, you know, how do you make a device? Like, what would the device look like? What would have the kind of demonstration of this, uh, how would I manifest this into something that we could utilize in, in a real system and a device? And then finally, we have you know, very engineering problems that, that we have to deal with. You know, how do I integrate dissimilar materials? You know, how do I get a complex oxide material that has four different cations and oxygen? And how do I integrate that onto silicon? You know, how do I make it into something that we could think about scaling up to a, to a massive scale for devices. And uh, so to me, there's a, there's a whole set of, of challenges and problems that kind of keep you on your toes and keep you interested and, and excited about coming into work every day. Okay, so we'll give you the two-fold answer. So I'll give you the research answer and then the academic answer as well. So from the research point of view, um, the students, both undergraduate and graduate, are you know, very good. They're, they're spectacular. They work very hard. Um, they basically, we just kind of get out of their way and let them do what they're going to do. And, and they do good things at the end of the day. So it makes uh, that that's exciting. And it's good to see them learning and growing and, and getting into into the research and, 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 and doing these complex things that people just didn't think we could do a few years, years ago. Um, we also have amazing set of facilities that are available to us at the University of Illinois, uh, especially for the types of work that we do uh, with Materials Research Laboratory and, and the various other institutes on campus. We can 
we can pretty much do everything that we want. I, I joke that the only thing we don't have on campus is a synchrotron, and if we had a synchrotron, then we really have our we'd have everything all in one place. So it allows you to kind of just do a lot of stuff close by. Academically, I think the University of Illinois, especially in material science, has a has a pretty unique approach to things. Um, you know, I've been affiliated and 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 gone through a number of different departments in in, in the country in material science and. We really take our undergraduate uh, curriculum the most serious of any school. So we really are seriously dedicated to producing good undergraduates, providing them with an excellent education. It instills, you know, a strong commitment and, and, and loyalty that I was just blown away by when I got here. And so, you know, like with the awards assembly, uh, the awards uh, uh, banquet that they have every uh, every spring, I was like, they don't do that other places. So I mean, it's something like the students. I don't know if they realize that it's very it's very different here, and the way that the undergraduate population is, is treated and and um, it it just it's good. It, it feels good, and you know, it's something to be proud of uh, that we do here. Okay, so uh, so my parents are both uh, professors, but not of science and engineering. They are both criminology professors. Okay, so my dad has a PhD in psychology, uh, and so they stopped helping me with my math and science homework probably when I was like twelve or thirteen years old. Um, and I thought I wanted to be a chemist. Well, okay, I'm from the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania, so we didn't have that many choices. So I took some chemistry classes and I was very good at chemistry and I was like, I will be a chemical engineer. And I went to undergraduate and I said, boy, chemical engineering just really isn't what I thought it was going to be. And uh, I found material science. I really liked research and I spent a lot of time as an undergrad doing research. I kind of knew what academia was a little bit like and so I think for me it really wasn't a choice. I think I just knew that's what I wanted to do. I liked the freedom of doing the research and and kind of you know setting your own your own way and, and, and trying to do all these crazy experiments. Uh, okay, so I'll give you two. I'll give you one when I was doing research and one when my students were doing research. Okay, so when I was doing research, we spent um, oh man, it took forever. So it was like two years in the making, but we uh, demonstrated room temperature electric field control of ferromagnetism with CMOS compatible electric fields. So let me translate that. That means uh, voltages that are compatible with like your computer, we were able to apply a voltage and switch ferromagnetic domain structures back and forth, which is a pretty big deal. Um, it took a really long time and it required like 20 different people and we, like it was very, it was even like a logistics challenge, not just a science challenge. So that was pretty fun and I'm pretty proud of that and we did, did some good work in, in that process. My students uh, here Oh, there's a lot. Um, I would say maybe one of the things I'm the most proud of that we've done so far is uh, having kind of a, a very comprehensive approach to, to, to treating our, the materials that we work on. So we do our own computational approaches. So we'll model uh, and, and kind of look at a really big phase space of materials and use the modeling to focus down on an area where we think there might be really good properties. And then we'll synthesize those materials and, um, and, and measure those properties. So we've done some work in our group that basically, I think people generally considered just weren't gonna be possible to do. Um, so we um, predicted some properties for what are called pyroelectric materials. Um, uh, they respond to temperature uh, with some interesting effects and we predicted some strong performance, synthesized those materials as, as thin films, controlled the properties very, very precisely and then uh, developed a whole new way of measuring the properties. In that process, the whole set of, uh, of uh, papers have been published and some really nice work has been done. So that, those are pretty pretty exciting things we've done. Right, so, okay, so I got here in August 2009, so this is the beginning of my fourth year, and I've taught two classes, and it looks like I think I'll probably be teaching some other stuff in the near future, uh, but I teach a big intro-level class. I, I've been te teaching the 280 class, which is not for our undergrads, which is a bummer, but, um, uh, but it's for like people in the College of Engineering. It's kind of intro to material science, so similar to like 182 for the for the in the, in, in the department. Um, I also teach uh, MSE 422, which is 
traditionally been called dielectric ceramics from the olden days of, 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 of talking about it, but it's a more comprehensive course on, on functional properties. We cover everything from metals and uh, insulators to superconductors to, let's see, polar materials, piezoelectric materials, pyroelectric materials, ferroelectrics, magnets, multiferroics, ion conductors, so on and so forth. So um, that class is pretty fun. Um, I don't know, I like, uh, I like teaching because, okay, one, I, I, I generally like interacting with the students. I like, you know, posing tough questions to them and, you know, putting them through their paces a little bit here and there. Um, and, you know, I, I like teaching the intro level class because it's kind of the first time these students have seen these things. So you get a chance to kind of introduce them to the things you like to do. And I like teaching MSE 422 because it's like the other end of the spectrum, right? These are students who are well into their career. They're either seniors or they're, some of them are grad students. And these are people who actually are really interested in these topics generally. And, and so you can really get into some details and, and cover some cutting edge stuff. I mean, we do like fresh off the, hot off the presses kind of research in, in that class, you know, occasionally even bringing challenges from my own group. Like if we have something we can't figure out, I'll be like, here, this is what we're working on. Does anybody have <laughs> any ideas? Okay, so academic wise, I would say you don't have to memorize anything. So just know how to, where to look stuff up. That's the biggest thing I generally say. It's like, look, I don't remember the equations and the constants and all this stuff, but if, as long as you know where to look it up, you're a step ahead of most people. So